Hello, everybody. I am here today to introduce you to an activity that we have coming up for you. Um, you guys have an opportunity to take a look at some authentic World War I uniforms and some other things owned by a World War I soldier. Um, and what this video is going to do is give you kind of the backstory for how I came to own these items and give you a little history on um, Sergeant Park, who is the man who wore these uniforms. Um, but the reason that we're doing this is because we know that social studies can be very difficult sometimes, especially when we're trying to consider events that occurred so long ago and might not necessarily seem really very real to us because they were such a long time ago. Our hope through this activity is that you get a chance to see that uh, World War I indeed was a huge event in the, in the timeline of the world and it makes it a little bit more real for you because you'll get to see some uniforms and some other items that are authentic. They were worn by Sergeant Park during World War I. He was in the artillery and he served and lived in the trenches just like the soldiers you've been reading about. So in the next couple of days, you'll be invited to take a look at these items. And what I'm going to do in this video is just tell you a little bit about um, some of the items and give you some ideas for what to look for and give you a couple of notes about how they came to be. So let's get started. All right. These uniforms were gifted to me by my godfather. This is Doug Hess. He's my godfather. That's my godmother, Aunt Becky. Um, and he and my dad, who's this guy right here, that's my mom, aren't they lovely, um, have been best friends since they were in first grade. Um, and so I grew up with Uncle Doug and Aunt Becky, and when Uncle Doug and Aunt Becky changed or moved houses, they kind of downsized and were ready for a smaller house. Uh, he found this cardboard box in his basement, and inside the box was all of his grandfather's uh, World War I uniforms. So this is my godfather, and he's probably the same age as several of your grandparents, and they are his grandfather's uniforms from World War I. Um, the uniforms are in amazing shape, and we are very, very lucky to have them. In fact, um, I, I have been told that we need to have them uh, taken to a museum when you guys aren't looking at them because they are in such good condition. So you guys really have a great opportunity here to, to take a look at it. So let me tell you a little bit about um, Grandpa Park is what my dad grew up calling him, and I'm going to introduce you to him now. All right, so Sergeant Park was stationed in New York, Western New York specifically. This photo was taken as they were about to leave Binghamton, New York for training camp at Spartanburg, South Carolina, which I think is odd that we now live in South Carolina, but I'm originally from New York. All right, so this is a close up from that same picture. And this right here, number 30, is Sergeant Park. So there's an actual photo of him. Um, and I'm going to give you a little fun history. This actually right here next to him, number 27, is Sergeant Hess, and they were best friends when they were in the Army. And as it turns out, Sergeant Hess, number 27, is actually my godfather's grandfather. However, Sergeant Hess uh, perished. He passed away after the war due to some complications with mustard gas, which I know we've talked about in class. And Sergeant Park, being his best friend and being really good friends with his wife, ended up remarrying Sergeant Hess's widow and becoming Grandpa Park. So they were best friends, and after Sergeant Hess passed away, then Sergeant Park um, became the, the new grandpa. And I think that's a really neat uh, way of looking out for, for Sergeant Hess's wife because they were such good friends that they ended up getting married. But all of these uniforms belong to Sergeant Park, which is number 30, and that's who we're going to be talking about today. I just I just wanted to give you a little bit of geography so that you kind of knew where we were talking about and because some of the uniforms actually have Rochester sewn into them. So um, Sergeant Park is from Rochester, New York. It's also where I am from. Um, it's Western New York. It's far away from New York City. Um, and he was stationed in Binghamton, New York. And that photo was taken in Binghamton. And they were on their way to Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, to have further training before they went across the ocean. Um, and just for a point of reference, North Augusta is where we are. All right, just a few notes before we get started. Um, you are welcome to touch the uniforms and look inside them, look in the sleeves, look inside um, the back of the jackets and the waistbands of the pants. There's some really interesting things that we don't see very often. And remember, the sheet that you're going to fill out is to make observations about the uniform. So things that you can prove, things that you can see, or things that you can note that can be shown. Don't make any inferences. Don't tell me what you think about these observations. You'll do that later in class. 
for the purpose of the activity when you're working in the um, cafeteria on the stage with the uniforms you're just making observations but I want you to look carefully for instance here's a picture of the inside of one of the pair of pants where you can see that it was actually these pants were made in Philadelphia Pennsylvania on November 14th 1917 it's pretty neat that these things are that old um, a lot of the uniforms do have some um, badges or patches and there are some ribbons and medals and unfortunately I don't know enough about the war to be able to tell you what most of them mean. Um, I do know that when you get to the jacket that looks like this, um, that's his parade jacket. It's the jacket he wore once he came home and it's the one that he would wear when you see the soldiers or the veterans walking in the parades. It's kind of his, a dressier uniform but it does have a lot of his um, badges or patches as well. I do know that this A stands for artillery, so I know that Sergeant Park was in the artillery. The other thing that we have are there's some other things like gloves and hats and there's some things I'm curious to see if you can figure out what they are. Um, but I do have some shells and I do have permission for Mr. Jeffcoat to show you these um, because they are completely empty and there's absolutely nothing that can um, that is dangerous about them at all. They've all had holes drilled in them and there's no gunpowder. But we wanted to give you guys an opportunity to see how big these uh, pieces of ammunition where these are the things that were getting shot at the soldiers so we just wanted to give you a chance to, to see exactly how big some of the ammunition was and what type of damage that it might do all right so your task you've been given a sheet and a clipboard is to make observations about the uniforms and there are four sets of uniforms to look at as well as some of that extra stuff that I mentioned what you're going to do is make at least five observations. Remember, observations are things that you can prove, things you can see or touch. You'll use these observations later when you get back to class to make inferences about Sergeant Park and about life as a soldier during World War I. So you'll be using what you've observed and what you've learned from in class to make some inferences about soldiers. For example, one of the things I find most um, interesting is that I can observe there are no zippers on any of these articles of clothing, including the pants. So that made me wonder, well, when did zippers become more, po or more popular or was it something, was it cost effective to use button flies instead of zipper flies? So it was really interesting to me that there are no zippers whatsoever on any of the uniforms. You're going to do the same type of thing. And the last thing is just a few precautions. These are authentic uniforms. That means they are over 100 years old and they are in really great shape. Please don't try on any of the clothes or the hats. You're welcome to touch them and observe them and look at them, but please be careful with them. Do not try on any of the uniforms. As you're making observations on that sheet that you've been given, do not bear down on the table of the items. So that means don't put the paper on top of the uniform and then write on top of the paper because inevitably, we all know the pencil is going to go through the paper and might damage the uniform. So make sure you're writing on your sheet and using your clipboard or whatever you brought to bear down on. Um, please don't use your pencil as a tool for touching items because as we all know, pencils leave marks. We prefer not to write on the uniforms that are over 100 years old, guys. Come on. And the last thing is if you cannot follow these rules, you will be asked to sit away from the items. We want to preserve them in the best condition that we can so that other people get the same opportunity you do to look at the, the uniforms. Uh, I will be there the whole time, so if you have questions, I can answer some questions, but I am certainly no expert on World War I. Um, there are some very interesting items. I'm very curious to see if some of you pick up on some of the tidbits that you've been taught in class, especially about what it was like um, life in the trenches and the types of things that the soldiers experience. I'm super excited to be able to share these with you. I know that my godfather is also just as excited. I always send him pictures every year uh, after the event so that he can see how, um, how awesome and how important this is to our students. And I know that he really appreciates the fact that he's able to share his grandfather's things with you guys. So take good care. Have fun. Um, I hope this is one of those activities that really sticks with you. And we'll see you in a few.